Hello and welcome to the Physics Topic Waves, Lesson 1, Types of Waves. We're going to look in depth today in this lesson at water waves and what type of wave they are and if you draw out the wave, the different parts of the wave and also what happens when two waves meet. Like in this image here, what's happening when those waves are crashing around the rocks? So do they carry on moving in the same direction? Do they get smaller? Do they get bigger? Um, and are they reflected? All things to have a think about. So what we need to know about water waves is that when they hit a surface, again, like in a different image here, it will be reflected. So you're used to hearing that word linked to light, but waves, water waves are reflected. So that means very simply, it will change direction and all waves can be reflected. Now, those waves are able to transfer energy from one place to another. And they are also known as transverse waves. So a water wave is a transverse wave and it moves up and down. So that means it has undulations, okay? Um, that's an important word that you need to remember. You need to be able to recognize and label where those undulations are and that it means that it's moving up and down. Now, that undulation is at a right angle to the overall movement of the wave. So you can see uh, the up and down undulation of that wave, but you can also see the overall forward movement to the right where that wave is intending to go. Now that undulation, not only is it a right angle to the overall wave, it's also at a right angle to the energy transfer because the energy transfer is in the forward direction as well. So we said that they're transverse waves, and when we look at a diagram of the transverse wave, there are parts that you need to know. So the displacement is basically how far that wave is from that centre point, middle line. And then you've got different sections that you need to label. So the height of that wave is known as the amplitude. And that's the maximum displacement of the wave. Then at the top of the wave is known as the crest of the wave, which is a term you might have heard of before. And the bottom, lowest point of the wave is known as the trough. Think of trough that some animals may eat out of. Um, and then you'll remember that it's the lower point, crest being crest of wave, crest of wave that surfers may ride might well help you remember those. So you also need to know what superposition is. And this is what happens when two waves meet. And there are a variety of outcomes depending on um, what the waves are, what position the waves are in when they've met. So it depends on if the trust or the crest of the wave are identical. And then that depends, that has an effect on the overall movement of the wave at the end. So when two identical crests meet, the height of each wave is added together and that will give you a crest of a wave that has doubled. That will then return that that will then return to the original size as well, moving back in and separating out. When two identical troughs meet, so the depth of both waves are the same, you add those depths together and um, what you will get is a giant trough of a wave that after they have met, they go in their opposite directions and they reduce in their height um, they reduce in their depth again. Now, when two different waves meet, so one crest, one trough, you will get um, you will get a different outcome. And if, like here, they are both the same height, 
because you subtract one from the other, what will happen is they will cancel one another out. So what you'll get is a very flat, still water surface. But remember, that's only if they're completely equal. So the likelihood of that isn't extremely high, but we need to give you those three different examples. So you need to know uh, um, what happens if two identical crests meet, what happens if two identical troughs meet, and what happens if a crest and a trough um, meet. Now, if they are different, you subtract the uh, trough depth from the crest height. Um, but if they are the same, then obviously it will leave this flat line like we've got here. And then afterwards, they will return back to their original height and depth again. Right, once, once you've got your head around water waves, what you need to have an understanding about is light waves. And um, they travel in straight lines, okay? What is worth remembering is they travel so fast you can't see them. So although it's a wave moving, it appears as if it's there all the time because the speed of light is so high. Um, they also transfer energy and they can be reflected um, just like water waves can, and they have undulations just like water waves do as well. But they don't need any particles to travel. So um, an important point to remember, because when you do about sound, it's a little bit different, but the light waves then can move through space as well, or a vacuum. But light is much slower when it passes through matter. And then the speed of light in a vacuum, so when there are no matter, no particles, is 300 million meters per second. That can also be written as three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second. You just need to know that the speed of light is very, very fast. Okay, so we've looked at waves, the properties of water waves, the properties of light waves. And we've also looked at superposition and what happens when the different um, peaks and troughs meet. What you need to do now is head over and have a go at the worksheet.